Okay, tonight we're going to talk about growing beyond post and pages. It's an introduction to the pods framework. Uh, pods is a content development framework for WordPress. I am the support lead and community manager for the Pods framework. Uh, that is their website, and the one below it is my website. We'll be coming back to the slide at the very end, so we don't have to worry about it right now. Okay, our story starts tonight with you, a WordPress developer. Well, now you're a WordPress developer. I don't know if you can see it or not. I added stickers and glasses on a goatee. Um, you've got a handful of websites under your belt. You've uh, got a gym, a salon, and a museum. Uh, you've been doing basically giving them a blog, a landing page, maybe an about page, that sort of thing, and, uh, and a contact form. And it's been working great for you. And then all of a sudden, the gym contacts you and has just said, told you that they're, they've gone franchise. They have now opened up gyms across the entire United States, and they need you to track all the different locations and all the trainers at all those locations and all the classes they offer at all those locations. The salon has expanded into spa services, and all of a sudden, they've got several stylists, they've got several uh, pedicurists and manicurists and everything else, and they want to put up a services menu on their website, and they want, you, they want to track all the different staff members that do all those particular different services. It's going to be quite a big haul. The museum added a local artist program, and they now want artist gallery pages. You know, very specific, like artist bio pages with like the entire galleries of that artist's work. And they have an event calendar that they want to edit. And they want to be able to show, you know, links from the event calendar to the artist that's actually doing the show that week. And uh, they've got a whole list of things they want you to do. So, of course, you could start throwing plugins or themes at the problem. And I know you guys have probably done this at least once or twice where someone asks you about a website and you go start hunting and say, oh, let me find the best WordPress fitness themes for this, or let me find like the best bookings and appointments calendar plugin, or let me find this theme for that, or maybe that other thing. But you've already designed your theme. You've got a very good theme on each one of these purple people's websites, and you like the way the site looks. You start throwing plugins and themes at it, all of a sudden you've got to retrain your users. You know, they're used to working on the back end of WordPress, and with all these different plugins, they're going to have like a whole other thing thrown in there and they're going to be a little confused. Or you're going to have to completely overhaul their site to get these plugins to work with it. You could try managing the whole thing with pages, and that would be like, and this is where, the, sorry about the red here, guys. So they've given you kind of like a wireframe of like a staff list and they want the schedule of classes and then they have a list of classes. And you could actually like go in in pages and create that, you know, output and make it look the way you want. But then you run into the wonderful problem of like, well, that staff person, I've got to copy their information over here to the schedule. I need to kind of go to the classes. And, oh, crap, I've got to go from the classes to there. And it's like, suddenly you're copying and pasting content all over the place. It's a mess. It's ugly. And you're going to make mistakes. What if this was much easier? What if you could take a contact, add them to the staff member, and have their information that you just plugged in automatically go to the staff list, to the schedule, and to the classes, and be maintained perfectly. Well, pods to the rescue. And I want to do the Batman thing. Ba -na 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 -na. <laughs> you can manage all your content in one place. In our pods admin screen, you can actually create your different post types. You can create and extend and add fields to any content. Custom post types, users, comments, custom taxonomies, menus, WooCommerce, you can post pages, any other plugin or taxonomy, you can add stuff to it. You can re use relationships to connect anything. So you have your staff member, a trainer, teaches a spin class on Mondays. That's three different types of content, but it's all connected. You can also display content in your theme without code. This is going to be a little bit, but this is from our WordPress Tampa Bay website. Uh, it lists all of our different organizers and what uh, meetups they actually are managing. This page, this little bit here, is actually output from this. Ignore the befores and the eaches and stuff, and just look at it. It's an un it's a unordered list with a list item, with a link, a title, and another link, and that's it. It's basically a tiny little block of content. This works in short codes, in widgets, and auto templates. Uh, yes, this is without code. It's HTML and CSS, but I at least expect everybody to know how to do that. You know, that's one of the kind of things is that there's not PHP involved, but you should know how to do HTML and CSS. The pods process is that we plan our content, 
we create it with pods, we populate it in the back end, and then we prototype it with pods templates. And we're going to start with planning. So we're going to start with your content needs. Am I going too fast? Okay, cool. You got your location list. And this is kind of like a wireframe. This is one of your gems at that location. So you got the gem with its location, its phone number, email address, and what trainers. And there's a staff list that shows, you know, the, the, the trainer, their email, their email address, what location they're at, the phone number, etc. You can see right off the bat that that information <laughs> is actually from over here. And that information is there. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> you have to think about your content, your your con your reusable content as data. You're taking that content framework that you're building up, that content strategy, that wireframe, and you're starting to look at it as actual usable data. And that's what we're doing here is we're taking that gems card and we're going, well, this is what I need to track about all the locations. I need to track the city, state, address, phone, email address, and trainers. For the staff, I need to track the name, the email address, the classes taught, and the gym location. I don't have to track the phone number here because it comes from up here. And you can kind of see where the connections go. That trainer is connected to staff. That location is connected up there. So These are custom post types and custom fields. That's a part of WordPress. Uh, we're actually creating a locations post type and a staff post type. All of this are custom fields. They basically go across, you've got like locations and those fields for that location, staff and that location. You can actually even repeat the email address because this table of locations belongs, that email belongs to locations, that email belongs to staff. Hey Tom, sign up for me. What are custom post types? Well, if you've been working in WordPress and you've been working in pages and posts, you've been working in post types all along. Your work, little thing here, if you've ever seen on the admin at the top of the editing a page, it's got a little question mark post equals 333. That shows you the actual ID number of that particular post. Your Post type for posts is post. Your post type for pages is page. Your post type for media is attachment, and for menus is nav menu item. And this is actually from the WordPress Codex, the post types. I give, I'm giving you a link there. You guys can read up more about what those are that way. I'm not going to go terribly deep into detail on it tonight. But I am going to show you the way that you can register post types for WordPress. This with all this lovely code. I'm going to only point out a couple of things. Locations, locations, location, and the slug locations, <laughs> and where we're actually registering it. And over here in the meta, somewhere down here, way down here, street address. So this is the complicated way to do it. And there's two little links there at the bottom for how to do this. This is the pods way. We're going to add a new pod, locations, and we're going to add a field of the pod, street address. Fairly simple. And that's now we're going to do a demo and show you how simple it is. Okay, let's see. So we have, ah, sorry, got to switch mice <laughs> back and forth a little bit here. Okay, and all right. Yep, I'm back, okay. All righty, so we have our demo website. Pods is the only thing installed, I believe. Yeah, Pods is the only thing installed. We're gonna go down to the Pods admin. I do have something in there about the services. We're going to actually add staff members. So we click Add New, Create New, and select Custom Post Type, which is the default. A singular staff member would be staff member, and plural would be staff. I also wanted to go crazy there. And I always do this because I like to know what the actual post type is going to be called, but that would automatically be filled in for you, uh, but I like overwriting it. Is it filled in from the plural or the singular? I think it's filled in from the singular. Okay. So. Hey, welcome. <laughs> uh, it went silent. 
Okay, so now we've actually created this post type. You can actually see it right there in the menu to the left. Can you guys see that? Probably not great. Let me, I can't move that screen unfortunately, but it's right here. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to actually add a field to it. Um, very straightforward stuff. We were tracking their phone number, I think. Well, this is actually the salon staff, so we don't really care about their phone number. Honestly, for the salon staff, we don't have to store much. Um, yeah, we don't actually. But I'll add something. I'll add phone number anyway. Just so you can see one. We can leave it a plain text field. You have the ability to add quite a few different kinds of fields. We've got text fields, uh, website, phone, email, password, paragraph, multiple different versions, the things there, date and time fields, date, date or time fields, plain numbers, currency, and then a whole bunch of other fun stuff. Uh, we're going to leave that one as a phone. Okay, and save that field. We're going to do a couple other little quick little housekeeping stuff here, though, to make sure this works for us later on. Um, under here in the admin UI, because I don't like that strange little push pin thing, I'd rather use a, a better icon for that. So we're going to come over here to the dash icons page and get, you know, how about that? We're going to give them that little guy. That link is actually provided down here under menu icon. So, and I want to put him at the sixth location. I want him right underneath posts because he's way too far down. So, oops. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Like you can go into now, right now, into the staff members and start adding people. We can go, you know, Jim True. We have, uh, this is another thing too, when you're creating post types, uh, your own content, use as much as possible that WordPress already gives you. WordPress out of the bat gives you a, a, a title for your post. It gives you this wonderful editor, so there's no reason to replace it. Uh, if you notice though, oh, look, I don't have a featured image. I don't have anything else. Let me go add those. So I have like my little field there for phone number, so I'll go ahead and fake that one in. But I'd like to put a face to my post. So let's go back into Edit Pods. I knew I forgot one little bit of housekeeping. And that's underneath Advanced Options down at the very bottom. We get Title and Editor. We can add Featured Image. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I probably want to add the Archive too. Just to be on the safe side. So now if I go back in, I should have a, a face block. I don't have a picture handy though. <laughs> so we're just going to live without that for a while. Uh, let's see. So staff. There we go. And now we have a space for the featured image. And I can add Elaine very quickly. You didn't know you worked at the salon, did you? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's how easy it is to basically add a post type. And you'll look, your theme automatically picks up. The name doesn't give anything else. If I added her picture, it would pick up the picture. And if I added um, her, con you know, her bio, it would have actually probably shown up in there as well. Um, I can also go to staff, and WordPress automatically shows the staff members, the archives, the single detail automatically shows up from WordPress when you add post types. So that's the biggest part of your work actually done. We've now planned, podsed, and populated. So now we're gonna go back to the slides. Okay. And let me change our mouse again. Quick change. Yep, good, okay. Maybe. <laughs> so now we're going to identify our connections between our data. So we have our locations page and our staff page. We know that our relationships are designed to prevent double entry. So like if you, you guys have ever worked in a spreadsheet several times? Okay. When you're entering data that you want to like put into a, into a database, which is kind of what we're doing, you want to track all the little information so it makes it easier to type in. 
So we've got you know me and my web email address, Betty Rubble and her email address, Barney Rubble and his email address, and Fred and his. We're calling this gym the um, I don't know the Flintstone the Flintstone Cross City or CrossFit gym. Uh, they've got the location, but you notice that we're repeating Hawaii and Alaska, and underneath the classes we're repeating spin, spin, Roomba, Roomba, rock throwing, rock throwing, and yoga. So this isn't an efficient way to store the data. We would not want to store location and classes as a text field inside that particular post because we would be repeating it all the time and we would make mistakes. So this is when you think along the lines of your connected fields, the ones that actually are using the same data, are your relationships. So in this case, in locations, trainers is the one that actually connects over here to staff. And classes taught connects to classes. Instructor connects to staff. Gym location connects to trainers. A location can have multiple trainers. Trainers can have multiple classes. We talking about this in relationship connection database web mode. All we're really worrying about is the relationship fields. In a database, that means we have one staff working at multiple locations. Or sorry. Multiple locations, one staff, or one staff at a location, multiple locations for staff. So basically, when you're creating this as a relationship field, we're actually going to create it as a multiple select. At this location, I am selecting multiple staff members. Does that make sense? Okay. At this, when I'm entering the staff member, I'm only going to be able to select one location because they've got a single connection back. They can't work in multiple places, they can only work at one. When you're looking at the classes, same type of thing. The staff member can teach multiple classes, so it's the multiple direction down here, sorry. <laughs> but the class can only be taught by one instructor. Okay, demoing relationship fields. We're going to take what we've already done and expand on it. Oops. Okay, swap the mice again. Da -da -da -da. Okay. So let's go back into our dashboard. What you're going to see is that I've actually already added services. I just haven't actually done anything with it. So I'm going to start there. In the salon, uh, each staff member can do multiple services, and each service can be done by multiple staff members. So this is going to be a many-to-many -many relationship. Does that make sense, guys? OK. All right. So let's add in services. Like that you. We've already added price, but one thing I didn't do on here, well, I guess it, went, it doesn't matter. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say I, was, I could get rid of the bio box or the, the editor box, um, but I don't need to. So we're going to add a field, and we're going to call this uh, related staff members. And I tend to do this, actually, I'm going to call it related staff, make it simpler. These are going to be the staff members that actually do this service, or perform this service. So we're going to go down and select a relationship field, which is way down here at the bottom. And we're going to relate it to staff. Can you guys see that up here? Do I need to zoom up more? I can make it a little bigger. Hang on. How's that? A little better? Yeah. Okay. We kind of lose the menu on the left, but I can deal with that if you guys can. So we're going to connect the this field to staff members and we're going to go into our additional options since we want to make it multiple since there's multiple staff members and then I'm going to change this to this is a new field type that is coming in our new version of pods due out in about two weeks uh, called list view it's going to allow us to do some pretty amazing things and that's pretty much it multiple select list view done okay so we're going to save this one Oops, sorry, I didn't save it in the right place. Uh -huh. <laughs> Down here, save. And it went green. Save button. Okay. And I'm going to go into staff members. Oh, crap. I need to make my menu a little better because I can't see any of it there. Okay. And I'm going to add a relationship field from staff to services. Is this making sense, guys, so far? It'll make more sense when we go into the interface on the back end. So, and 
and notice when I selected the services, it actually recognized the fact that I have a connected field from the other direction. And it's giving me the option to make this bidirectional. Anytime you've got a connection between two tables, you actually want to make it bidirectional. You want to activate that particular connection because what's going to happen on the back end is every single time you add a staff member from a services page, it's automatically going to connect that, that service to that staff member. So like if you added a book, it's going to automatically connect the author. If you add an author and add a book to that author, it's automatically going to connect that as well. And this will make more sense when I go into the UI for it. So we will do multiple select list view, save field, and save pod. OK. So I haven't added any services yet, but we have Elaine and Jim are available for services. So we're going to do a standard haircut. And we're going to go down. We'll give it a price. Uh, 25 sounds good and oh let's see Elaine ah there she is but you know what we just hired Chris Wegman so let's add him real fast am I spelling your last name right Chris I before E, I before e except after C okay <laughs> got it and his phone number is five 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 one four one four so when we save him he has now been added as another person who does haircuts. I don't do haircuts. I don't have any hair. <laughs> so that wouldn't make any sense. And if I now go into our staff members over here, Chris has been added. Notice he's automatically there. You didn't have to do any work at all. Uh, and if I look at him, he has haircuts. <laughs> and Elaine will also have that in there. So now Chris also does goatee trimming. It's a really specialized practice, but it's cheap. Oops. I don't need to put the dollar sign in. Okay. Is there a price field that does like currency? Yeah, that is a currency field. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I don't need to worry about that one either. Uh, oh, yes, I do, because, no, I don't. I forgot I'm inside this little window that says services performed add new. This is still kind of new to me. I'm like, we're just adding this as pods 2.7, this little amazing back and forth thing, uh, interface here and it's I love it <laughs> but I'm still getting used to it okay so I think I'm the only one who doesn't actually do anything right now so yeah I'm not doing anything I need to add a service so we're gonna call this one uh, head shaving <laughs> But it's expensive. It's 50. <laughs> okay, so we have now created a linked three services, three staff members, and they're all connected. It's pretty damn impressive. So let's go back to our. Is that making sense to you guys? Okay. All right. Go back to here. Do our mouse swap again. Okay. Now we're actually going to talk about the prototyping side of this. If you treat your content like a mail merge, have you guys ever done uh, mail merges where you've got like a spreadsheet of like a bunch of people's addresses and names and you want to push them into an envelope or into like a Word document? You've done that concept before? That's what we're going to do here. We're going to take this information and merge it into this little thing like instructor merge field, instructor name, merge field, email address, the whole bit. Uh, this is our mail merge template. This is going to be pushed into that and create four separate little posts or something of that nature. Well, we're actually creating this with pods, templates, and magic tags. So what I've done is I've changed the field. This is our post title from WordPress for our little guys here. This is the email address that I've added. We're going back to the gym now. We're not in the salon anymore. This little strange format, the curly braces, the at sign post title, and the curly braces, at sign email address, these are called magic tags. Um, this basically connects to this when it goes through a post. And it's going to take that and replace that little thing with this 
when you're looking at Jim's post. Does that make sense, guys? I'm looking for dead stairs. <laughs> okay. We're going to call one of these custom post types. Now, you guys have worked with short codes, right? Okay. We're going to call this little custom template, the one we just wrote up, with a short code. So we still have this over here for your information. This is our pods template, that little thing we created. Uh, our short code is pods name equals trainers, and that's coming from the post type trainers. So trainers. Limit equals minus one. I want to show an entire list of everything, so that's why I'm using limit equals minus one. What's our time like, Nark? Uh, what's our time? Time. Uh, time. What's our time? Our oh, time. Is Sorry. <laughs> Six forty-eight. Okay. Cool. <laughs> we still have time. Good. So now what I've done is, is I'm creating the, the short code and I'm closing it off at the other end of this with like a little slash of a pause and I'm putting all that information in between. This thing in between here is called a custom template because it's actually templated in between the pod short code. Um, you'll run across this sometimes you, when you're prototyping and you're testing to see if something's going to work or not. You can very quickly, when you're on a WordPress page, just start typing, create the little start of the short code, the end of the short code, put some fields in between, and boom, publish and look at the page and it will show you did it work. And we're going to show us that in a minute uh, when we actually go in here. You also have the option of creating a pods template that's saved in the database. And this is underneath pods admin templates and add new template, add a pod template. You give it a title, you get a little code editor screen, and it allows you to kind of like create your HTML content block. And that's how you need to think of these, is these are little content blocks to reuse throughout your theme. And they're to show your custom content, the fields and stuff that you've added to the post types, that WordPress doesn't show automatically. Remember when we did the, the view staff and all it showed was her title, it didn't show any of the, the, her phone number or what services she did or anything like that? This is to make that show. Does that make sense? Because you want to have the content that you've added that is custom, you want it to show on the staff page. You know, you want to show the address, the phone numbers, and everything else. You can also call a pods template with a short code. That thing we just saved was the email header. And you basically, instead of doing the custom header in between like a slash pods thing, you just add the, the tag here, template equals email header. The short codes are incredibly powerful. I'm not going to go deep into detail on them tonight. Uh, but any, if we want to do like a follow-up of one of these, I'm happy to do it. I've called like super fast prototyping with short codes, widgets, and templates. So. OK. There's also some special magic tag handling. Um, basically, I've shown you this one, your custom field that's in the database. You access it with like custom field with little curly brackets and the at sign. Your relationship connection is a little different. You have a related field, so that would be like the related staff member. And then you've got the field in the other pod. So that means, if you think along the lines, you had a table over here that is uh, services, and I want to reach across into staff. So if I'm on services, I've got related staff member. So that's what would be actually going here. And then there's a period, and then over here, I do post title to show Jim True, Elaine, uh, Chris Wegman. If I wanted to show their phone number, I would go dot phone number. It's pretty straightforward. Um, WordPress content, the actual content, that editor box, is called at post content. The featured image is the post thumbnail. The permalink, which is when you're anywhere on the website and you don't want to have to like remember domain slash staff post, whatever slug, if you don't want to have to remember that, permalink is what you want to use. It's exactly equal to get underscore permalink from uh, WordPress. It's a function. We also have related field record permalinks, which means you put in the relationship field like related staff member dot permalink, and it'll give you the link to that post as opposed to the post for that you're currently on. Does post content work like that too? Yeah. What do you do? Okay, we also have the ability to do template tags and pods come templates. These are when primarily you use this kind of stuff when you want to uh, show information from something that's connected to this post. So like, if this field display this, else display that. 
So it's if field name content, else content if. And if I want to loop through all the related records, so if I'm on like the services page or on a service like a haircut, and I want to show all the people that do it, I'm going to go each related field, and then I want to show maybe the post title and uh, maybe a phone number for that particular person, and then each. So as an example, if staff member, I'm going to start my little unordered list, each staff member, li, post title li. Now I could make this a, a uh, anchor reference, you know, and a hyperlink. So I go a href permalink, and then close it, and then go post title, and end my a thing. Well, I'll show you that one live on when we do the demo. We end the each, we end the unordered list, and then else, no staff found, and then we end the if statement. This will make more sense the more you play with it, and all of this is documented on our website, and we have lots of examples. Uh, we also have the ability to do this amazing thing called pods templates with auto templates. So remember how we went to the view staff member and all it showed was the name, it didn't show anything else? So let's say you created that wonderful little pods template, and you wanted it to automatically show on all the staff members pages. So like if I go into the single staff members and I looked at Chris's page, I don't want to have to add a short code to show that stuff. I don't want to have to add a short code to Denise to Elaine's page to show that stuff or to my page to show that stuff. I want that to happen automatically. So on your WordPress theme, when your theme is actually going through the loop, it goes through a little thing and outputs the content. We're accessing the content to output the auto template either before or after the content. I tend to, like so for me, the content's automatically dis displayed by the theme, and I can show you that on this next demo. I'll make sure we add something into one of those bio boxes so that we can show that. But the content's automatically displayed, so I just want to show my custom content. So I'm going to output it, my uh, little template name, after the content, the content. And that's pretty much it. These are automatically populated for you. This one, if you only have one template, will also be automatically populated for you. This is some special circumstances. If you want it to execute this outside of the loop, you can click that. It's not highly recommended. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do a demo now. Prototyping with pods templates. Da -da -da. So let's start with that one that we did with the shortcut. Okay. We're gonna go into pages. Add new. Okay, now I do have a wizard here, which I could use, so might as well. I'm gonna display a list multiple pods items. I'm gonna list all the staff members and I'm gonna use a custom template. So that thing I just told you about, I'm doing a list item. Do you guys know what I'm doing when I'm doing this HTML stuff? Do you follow? Yeah. I'm seeing heads nod. Good. Okay. I'm very happy because I'm not teaching you HTML and I'm not teaching you CMS <laughs> or CSS. You should know at least this if you're going to be working in WordPress. So in this case, I'm not actually showing any specific information. Oh, and I another thing. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So we got permalink and post title. And we're going to do minus one. And that's pretty, I think that's enough. And it's created, yuck, sorry. <laughs> it's created our custom template for us. You've got pods name staff, limit equals minus one. This little block in here is the custom template, and it ends itself with a slash pods. We publish this and view it. Look, we suddenly have a staff list. That shows, can you guys see that? Chris's, Elaine's, and Jim's stuff. So automatically, we've got the ability to do quick links. Now let's kick it up a notch. Templates, we're gonna add one. I'm gonna call this staff detail. And I'm gonna select my staff member over here as my reference. One thing it does over here is it automatically gives you kind of like a field reference for all the connections from staff to related fields and everything else. So, kind of helpful. Oh my gosh. 
It's services perform. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> very, very in depth. So, first off, we know we have an email address. I think. No, we have phone number. What up? My bad. It actually will help you finish it automatically for you. I'm going to throw this in a div because I don't like things not like that. Now, what I'd like to do is show the related services that this staff member is performing. So I'm going to do if, what did I say, related services. This is the only one that doesn't automatically fill at some point. Services performed. That sounds disgusting. No laughter. Oh my gosh. Deadest room ever. <laughs> okay. So we know we want an unordered list. We're going to call it uh, get a class of services. And this is um, what I'm doing is trying to be semantic. If you think of your your content as always being semantic and being indexed by Google and being read properly, you want to be as semantic as possible. It doesn't matter how you're actually going to output it on the web. Like I may actually list these services side by side, but I can do that with CSS. I don't have to change anything, you know. But when I output it, I want to be as semantic as possible. So that's why I'm doing this little thing where I'm putting in an inside an order, an ordered list. I can target services and display that list item as a line block. I can make it a table. I can do whatever I want there. So, okay, now I need to do the each services performed. We'll close that box off. Okay, I want to link to the service, so I'm going to go. And I'm going to list the same name of the service. Are you guys following so far? Mm -hmm. I'm looking. So, so within the each, those references are to the thing that you're looping over? Yes, so you don't have to be specific. I and don't have to prefix these with services performed because right. I'm inside an each lib for services performed. Can you still access the, the parent thing that you were in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and specifically by not uh, prefixing. So actually, that would be a problem. I see what you're talking about. I wouldn't do it inside the each loop. Right. Yeah. So you could if you actually called it from another. If I went in here and added another pods template and called it in a short code, I could. Okay. So yeah. A little more complicated, but fun. I'll, when we're done, I've, I've got a couple of websites I can show you where we kind of do some more pretty impressive stuff. So div uh, style equals clar float right. I think that's right, yeah. And we're going to put in the price here. I think it was the price. Was it service of performer? Yep, yeah, price. Okay. Simple enough. And close off my list item. And I'm done. I'm not going to worry about the each because I've actually, yes, I will. I will just, I'll put the else in here. Because we're nice. This staff member performs no more services. And publish. And this is staff detail. So now what we're going to do is go into edit pods and staff. And that little screen I told you about, auto templates, we're going to enable it for this. And we're going to put staff detail. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it before the content and hit save. And now if I go into our staff members and I look at Chris, ta-da, my custom contents. I have my phone number that I added for Chris. I've got the link to the standard haircut. I've got the goatee and the prices. And this is automatic, just like that. I can also... Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. I'm going to do it in the archive, too. Why not? Because I'm just a rebel that way. Can you tell, guys, that I love pods? <laughs> I've been working for them for uh, next month will be three years now. So I absolutely love them, love them, love them. They're wonderful. <laughs> I love this product. 
I loved this product three years ago when it wasn't anywhere near this good. So let's do staff detail and we'll do before and save. So now if this theme actually handled, um, what you call it, if this theme handled archives and had a breadcrumb right there, I could show all of that, but let's do this. We'll just call it staff. I think we went to that page before. And all of a sudden, look, you have your entire staff list with the information. Now granted, this isn't a very pretty theme. It's a hideous theme, but it's also, we have the ability to go customize. You know, I don't like that theme. Let's change it to 2015 and watch. I've changed the theme and all my content's still there. If you did this the typical way in WordPress, you would have to write a little single underscore staff dot PHP and it would be in your theme file and then all of a sudden it'd be gone when you switch themes and you'd be upset and angry. But you don't have to worry about that anymore because it's automatically there. And actually, this thing looks pretty good for these, so I'm going to keep that one. So. <laughs> yeah. Now that you showed us the Chris Wegman page, can, can we see the Chris Wegman page and then see that template code again? Sure. Just one more time. Yeah. Let me uh, go backwards. Yeah. Okay. So I'll walk through that template again very quickly. Where are we at? I'm trying to. Make sure I don't go over. We're at seven. We got about thirty minutes. But actually, I think we're pretty much on good time right now. So, okay, that was staff detail. So, see how we're pulling on the phone number here. We're going to see if he's got the related, if he has any related content, and then I start like the unordered list, and then I go into each loop and output just that content. Make sense? Yes. Thank you. No problem. Not a problem. Okay. So, and I can do this for services too. I can reverse the link. One thing I do a lot is this particular block of content. I pretty much, this whole thing, the if, else, if, I do it all the time. So I might as well just go ahead and create a services detail that uses the same concept. And I'm going to cut and paste, but change some stuff around. This will be, what is it, staff, nope, services. And honestly, this little thing down here, the reference, the template doesn't care what you've got down there. So <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, the only thing that matters when you're using the templates is what's actually over here in the little code box. So uh, related staff, okay. So. Type right. Related staff. I'm missing an A in permalink as well. <gasps> I sure am. Thank you. No wonder that link wasn't working. Wait, no, no, it's a salon. It's the permalink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we got the humor. Nice. Okay. <laughs> that was very good. Woohoo! Okay. That was funny. Okay. And I want to move this. Over here. Uh, cut that out. That should work. Okay. And we want to put the phone number. So we're going to put that back. But we're going to change that to phone. I think it's phone number. Let's see. And I'll tell you guys that I do this little kind of stuff, probably about phone number, okay. Probably 20 times a day when I'm talking to people on our, um, our support chat, because they'll come in, they'll come on the line, they go, well, I don't know how to do this particular thing, or I have a thing that I want to connect this way, like I'm trying to build like a schedule, and I want to do this, that, the other thing. Services have no status. That's not good. Let me check everything else. That all looks good. We'll publish that one. And I'll go back and fix the permalink on the other one real fast. Oops. Templates. 
I'm going to have to edit all these little dead spaces out of here. I just noticed that. <laughs> okay. Now I want to go back and set the stack, the services to have that template show automatically. Services detail for services detail before. Save file. Okay. This is local, so all right. So now if I view Chris and I go into standard haircut, ta-da! And I can go back and forth. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> That's an ugly. What did I do there? <laughs> oh, I'm floating the phone number over the top of your, your that's what I, I'm floating two things on the same line. So that's why that's not working. That actually should be not floated, the price. I need to actually just put that up here. So something to fix. But at least you guys can see how it works. Okay? Pretty straightforward. Let's get back into our demo. Let's switch our mouse again. Okay. So that was prototyping with pods templates. What else can you do with pods? You can create a custom settings page. And these are great for when you're using common text throughout the website. Let's say you've got a logo. Let's say you've got very specific colors that you want to apply to the entire site, but they, maybe you want the client to be able to like change them, or maybe they've got one graphic that they want to always use as a default header or something of that nature, or their phone numbers, business hours, or address. Custom settings page is great for that because it applies to the entire site. There's no post to it. Uh, you can also extend the users, media, or other plugins. So let's say, in the case of the salon, uh, let's say we wanted to actually make it so that we showed which uh, member, which people were actually in that day. So let's say I extended users, I linked it to the staff, and I linked Elaine's little record in there. When Elaine comes in, she goes and she checks the box off that says, yeah, I'm working today. And then she shows up in the, in the widget on the side that says, this staff member is working today. So kind of useful stuff. Uh, you can extend media. So you can connect them to specific posts. You can add categorization to them, all kinds of stuff. Uh, you can also connect to pods with PHP, uh, the REST API, or the pods API. We support all WordPress core methods of communicating with the content created with pods. So all of your standard get post meta, get taxonomy stuff, get term, list, all that stuff works just fine because these are standard WordPress core taxonomies, post types, etc. The only thing I'm not talking about tonight is taxonomy because I was going into it and I said, you know what, it's just too much. <laughs> I can already see glazed eyes out there and I don't want to like lose any more. But the nice thing is, is that you can. You can connect to all of our stuff with the standard WordPress methods. So most themes will show our stuff automatically. We also have the REST API. So if you don't want to deal with WordPress at all, and all you really want to do is let WordPress be your database backend, you can use a React frontend, or a Vue frontend, or a, one of the other ones, and connect to the REST API and have this stuff to show where you, how you want it to show. We also have an internal API, which gives a lot more flexible connection methods. It's what I learned first. I didn't actually learn WordPress PHP first. I learned the Pods API first. So I'm much more comfortable on that side of the house. Uh, to get help with pods, installing it is directly from the WordPress repo. Uh, you can also in the back end just go add new plugin, select pods. We have a support form on the WordPress.org website. Um, our documentation is at pods.io slash docs. We are revamping this. Hopefully by September, October, it will be relaunched. It will be docs.pods.io. It will automatically redirect. Uh, I'm building a very large knowledge base in pods. That links to all of our videos, all of our step-by-step -step tutorials, our case studies, our um, code snippets, <laughs> all of that stuff. And uh, it all kind of like connects together using those wonderful things that's called pods relationships. We also have a Slack chat. If you go to pods.io slash chat on the support channel, I pretty much live on that thing. So anytime you've got a question when you're working on stuff, just drop in, ask a question, and I will help you. Uh, that's kind of how we go around here. We are a free plugin with free support. Mm -hmm. Why are you free? That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, not true. Automatic provides some money, yes, but we get all of the rest of our money through donated donations. 
Automatic decided that they thought our product was, was good enough that it needed to be free because there's a, the concept we think about it is, is that we're, when you're at that stage, kind of like, let's go all the way back to the beginning of the slideshow where we showed, you know, you're a web, a web developer and you're just getting started thinking about doing data-driven websites that actually have complicated content. We're an on-ramp for that. We're like a really good plugin to get used to, to start building really smartly driven, data-driven websites. And we felt like that needed to be free. But just because we're free doesn't mean we're not valuable. So if you value what we do for free, donate to us. We have a little donation model down here called friends.friendsofpods, <laughs> friends.pods.io. It's a subscription model. We have like discounts for a lot of the plugins and hosting and some other stuff that you guys might actually use as developers. Um, discount codes at SiteGround, discount codes at WP Engine, discount codes for Beaver Builder, um, a lot of stuff. And some folks just give us money because they want to. But it keeps us alive, keeps the, the lights on. Was well, Pods ever a, a premium Never. plugin? No Never. Free? Never. We were always free. We, were, we actually were a port from Drupal, uh, CCK. Uh, we were around before WordPress had post types. Wow. Yeah. And that kind of a structure that we used at that time was actually all table-based, uh, actual external tables to WordPress. When WordPress launched their custom post types, we revamped and deposited 2.0. That was our very first Kickstarter, which we made absolutely no money from. It cost us money more than the other way around. Uh, Scott honestly probably paid most of it out of his own pocket. But anyway, <laughs> we revamped to use the custom post types and custom meta. Uh, like WordPress uses. But we have one table that sits outside of WordPress called WP Pods Relation, and it stores this odd little connection thing. But basically, think about it as our relationships are very fast because they're indexed through that table. But we also store the connection inside the post meta for your relationship field. So you can still get at it in a normal way. So if you build this yeah. head of dependency on pods, with another plugin, can you invent that plugin or make it a dependency of your plugin? You can do a TGM act. Uh, what is it called? TGM activator, whatever. You can make pods be installed and activated on if you're distributing something. Yeah. So, uh, our basically the custom post types that we create, the custom meta that we create, it's all written to the database. It isn't deleted. So if you got rid of it you'd still have it, but you'd have to register your post type, et cetera. We don't do an export to code right now. We probably will after pods 2.9 or 3.0. We're switching to object-based fields, and uh, that's going to be, yeah. <laughs> Talk to Scott on that one. <laughs> I don't understand it. But anyway, we're simplifying a lot of our configurations, et cetera, and once we do that, we should be able to do export to code a lot easier. We have extremely complicated additional capabilities inside pods as well. You can reach, if on your database, your WordPress database, as long or the actual database, you can reach out to external tables. If you're on a multi-site, you can reach out to the multi-site tables and read things. We're not network capable, but once we do the field objects, et cetera, we should be able to actually do a full network configurations that you can pass down to your, your network sites and stuff. So there's a lot of amazing things coming. 2.7 is just the first of them. That wonderful little, call them, we call them flexible relationships in list view. But that's 2.7. 2.8 is gonna be our group field manager. And it's gonna allow you to create like little meta box wrappers and massive amounts of grouping all over the place. 2.9, I think, is repeating fields and loop fields. And by the way, we've always had loop fields because we've had relationships. We just never believed, we never agreed with the way that repeating fields were stored. So, because the way they store their data forces you to read every single record in the database to do summarizations of content. And that's not an efficient thing. We can talk about that a question afterwards. So, okay, I am Jim True. I'm the support lead community manager of Pods Framework. Again, that is our website. That's my website. Um, I am also the organizer for WordPress St. Petersburg. We do meetups monthly in St. Pete here at the Iron Yard. 
this month and next month, and then I gotta find another location for us. Uh, first and second Thursdays every month. Our website, which we just launched, uh, relaunched anyway, is timofawp.org. Um, that we have on that website, there's a link to our Slack chat, our Facebook group, and our meetups. We are currently in the process of splitting all of our regional uh, meetups for Tampa into city-based meetups to, so that they'll show up on your dashboard. Uh, I should be seeing an announcement out on that soon. <laughs> and we're going to do a very heartfelt thank you to Iron Guard St. Pete. They have hosted us here for two years. Uh, September next month is our last meetup here. Iron Yard is closing, unfortunately. They are closing nationwide. So we are in search of another place to host. And I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> I love these people. They have been amazing to us. They've just been awesome. They never charge a dime. And they've let us use these amazing spaces to do our meetups at. Uh, but yeah, we're looking for additional locations right now. I'm in talks with the St. Petersburg Library System. I'm going to be meeting with the Greenhouse and some others. But if you guys have venue locations that you think might work, uh, hop on to TampaBayWordPress.org, hop onto our Slack, let me know, and uh, we will start looking at them. And that is that, guys. We're done. <laughs>